So we talk about values-driven leadership. So when I was asked to do this uh, talk um, and was given the three uh, content pillars to choose from, uh, I felt like, oh, maybe I uh, would like to take uh, the challenge of, of talking about leadership because that's what I've been obsessing about the last like couple of years. Because uh, I feel like ever since I started this company, which was completely accidental, I, uh, I used to be in banking, so I was like working for a company. And then I got married and then I started thinking, okay, do I go back or do I uh, try something new? And then um, good thing my husband was very supportive and he was like, oh, maybe you should just really think about what you wanted to do. So when I was in college, I actually studied uh, marketing and I've always been very, very interested in uh, interior design, but thought I never had the talent to be an interior designer, but I've always liked to think about and go visit places and experiences and whatnot. And so uh, luck came upon me and I, 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 I was lucky to be hired by my, fir, uh, fir, by my client when, when I was at Goldman because he came to my wedding and my wedding was actually my first event that I ever planned. And then, and then he was like, you know what? I never saw that side of you. Do you want to come and work for me? And he was actually in uh, hotels. And so uh, hospitality, marketing, he was like, why don't, why don't you join me and, and, and be a consultant to my marketing uh, team? And that's how I started. And so being an accidental leader, or not leader, I was just a consultant. That's how I started, just all by myself. And then so for the next 10 years, what happened was I had no clue what I wanted to do. I had no clue what I wanted to be. I had no clue what what company I was building essentially. So all I focused on was just who I am as a person and what values I actually cared about. So the first 10 years of my entrepreneurship slash leadership was all about applying values, so personal values. So when I looked up values-driven leadership, traditional definition of values leadership, values-driven leadership was all about that, meaning principles, the standards of behavior, one's judgment of what is important in life. So these were my personal values. Empathy, humility, loyalty, integrity, respect, professionalism. And hopefully some of my clients here would feel that that was really what EXR was all about. The whole time, I didn't really think about how much I wanted to earn, how much, you know, like, um, I could let myself fail, or how much you know, uh, other people are leaning, uh, you know, being dependent on me. All I cared about was being this, all of this, to whoever uh, was paying for my service, basically. So I became the magic work, like magic worker, who um, constantly is being asked a lot of these things, like, "Can you do this for me? Can you ask this person to come? Can you?" And I don't know how many of you here are in agency business or service industry. Do you feel like you're being asked a lot constantly? <laughs> I think, and even as a mother as well, right? As a mother, as a leader, constantly you're being asked all of these questions. Can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? So a whole time I just said, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna apply my personal values. I'm gonna be humble. I'm gonna be, uh, you know, I'm, I'm empathetic. You know, my, my client needs this. I gotta get this done for them. My child needs this. I gotta get this done for them. You know, and then at the same time, good thing I had like uh, corporate training uh, in banking. Um, all I cared about was just being professional for my client. And so for 10 years, I worked very, very hard until three years ago, COVID hit. And then, you know, good thing I had a very good portfolio of clients and then I had a very good team who actually shared a lot of my values that I shared um, earlier. And then when COVID hit, suddenly I'm like, wait, I've never done any marketing. Um, it was all referral, you know, clients were like, hey, go for Colleen, she would do anything for you basically. <laughs> and, then, and then when COVID hit, it was like, nobody's asking me for anything because, you know, then what was being asked for me was actually, me as a mother, uh, you know, I, I started saying, hey, wait, I'm actually a mother. I need, to, I need to attend to my kids. I need to take care of their schooling. And then at the same time, my team, who suddenly I'm like, wait, I need to take care of their livelihood. They're dependent on me. They need a job. And so at the same time, my clients as well, even though, you know, they can't do events, then they come to and ask me, what else can I do? So all of these questions started coming to me and then 
um, while I was like trying to stay together for them, for, for example, I actually create another company so that um, I didn't have to fire any of my staff. I actually moved them to a new team and then started investing into other experiences. And then uh, for clients, I started doing a lot more research, trying to do, again, being more flexible for them. So for example, I used to be like, okay, in 2019, things were going very well. I started telling my clients, okay, I'm not gonna take jobs that's smaller than this. You know, I really need to protect my resources. But then again, I have to restart and started doing smaller jobs, really helping them and thinking about, you know, how I can um, serve them better. And then th during these three years, more changes happened and more challenges happened, especially in Hong Kong, right? Um, work habits, you know, like staff started saying, hey, I'd rather be a freelance. So much harder to hire, you know, like people are like, oh, I, you know, like, I need to see what's in this for me first. Instead of saying, okay, let's, let's get together and do this for our clients. So um, I felt like being a good company, which I was trying to be in the first 10 years, simply wasn't enough anymore. So I sat by myself at home and started, you know, there were moments that I had to break down and ask my husband, like, why am I doing this to myself? Like, why am I doing this? You know, am I doing this right for my clients and for everybody else? I feel like all I'm doing is just burning myself and I'm not delivering the right value for the right people. So then I started thinking about what my company is about and what I stand for. And then I felt, feel like actually this whole thing for my company, there are four key stakeholders. One is actually me, myself, and then people in my team. Um, second of all, of course, my clients. Third, the company itself. Uh, and then four, uh, the market and the society. So I started thinking, okay, values. What does values really mean? So would only applying personal values make myself um, successful or make my company successful? And I realized, no, actually values mean the other um, definition, which is the uh, what's important, um, uh, wh what's being uh, perceived as important for uh, the key stakeholder. So I started obsessing about how to create values for these four um, and maintain a balance for them. So the first one actually has to be about for yourself, which is for myself. Um, this is something I started doing, uh, uh, which is checking in with peers. I started seeing myself behaving weirdly, like I started drinking more maybe, or maybe like uh, finding myself like um, uh, uh, taking some of my frustration at my kids, or you know, just taking on way too much at work and bringing the stress home, for example. And then so I started trying to check in with my friends and peers and everybody to see if there's something wrong with me. <laughs> and then second of all is just to constantly ask myself, like, what are my priorities? Why am I doing this? You know, like, uh, what is my dream? What, 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 do I want out, what do I want to do out of this? And then also third of all, like taking all this and ask your team again, like what motivates them? I think it's very important to know what their personal values and what motivates them. So sometimes I would even ask my, um, my, my colleagues like, or my teammates, like are there any brands that you wanna work for? Are there any celebrities you wanna see? Are there, um, you know, is there any um, scope of work or any challenges you wanna take on? Like just trying to spend the time to find out what motivates them and at the same time find, find out what motivates yourself because I realized that keeps changing all the time. And so the values that I would like to create more myself actually recently has been to become a better leader with a defined purpose, reach a step closer to financial independence and then for sure, I want to make everything that I do worthwhile to be away from my loved ones at home. So when I look at my child as a woman, you don't have to feel as guilty. And then second of all, when I talk about the, the, like the second priority in those four is actually the market and the sector or the world. I started asking this really big, big question for myself is, you know, what are the changes I want to see in the society and how can my company, how can myself contribute to that? Because um, I think, you know, this topic of um, impact driven uh, entrepreneurship or impact driven leadership um, has become a buzzword recently. And that got me thinking like, so how can I actually achieve that? So um, I started thinking, okay, um, you know, looking at what uh, Betty has done is, is 
has you know also inspired me previously was like I want one day that everything that I see or every even in Hong Kong like new territories Kowloon and Hong Kong I would love to be able to create someone's memory or make a mark on someone's memory um, on a day-to-day -day basis so making a mark in someone's life through experiences and also as an agency I feel like we have the platform or the power to actually enable people to unleash their potential and achieve their dreams. So um, I think as an agency, because we have so many different projects, so it's not just one brand, it's not just like one constant thing. The, the beauty of it is we get to be uh, some, somewhere where different talents can come in and just tell me like, this is what I want to do. And then I can kind of like find the opportunity for them to make them shine. And then last is actually to make an industry that is rewarding as well as nurturing for, for these talents. Because what an agency is or what you know, we are, creative people, is really a pool of talents who just come together and create something that's you know, not in the market already, not in the world already. So how can we make this a safe place and also make them feel well compensated and make them feel um, good about what they can bring together? So hopefully, by being that in the market, in the sector, in the, in, the, in the society, I can actually make a change. Then success, like about company. Um, I didn't really think about that in my first 10 years. All I cared about was the success of my clients. And then little did I know that I finally realized, especially during COVID, is that I need to make, make sure that my company is success, as sustainable as well as successful in order to support my clients. Because if I'm not financially stable, for example, uh, I don't have enough means to attract the best talents. Um, you know, it's not stable enough sometimes to even finance my clients. And, and you know, I think it's, it's important to also create influence in the market to actually help my clients, you know, to have the right network or whatnot to make them magic. So, so that's how I kept myself uh, checked in like meaning before I only cared about if my client is doing okay now I actually need to constantly think about if my company is doing okay am I expanding in the right markets am I looking for the right uh, uh, verticals to be in and actually again going back to my dream is to making a mark on someone's life and experiences am I actually going to different places in order to make that mark so I started obsessing about you know being consistent in delivering our brand promises uh, then last but not least is, of course, to our clients. Um, I feel like the last 13 years, uh, being an agent, um, uh, not only are we there for our clients uh, to support them and deliver our pro professional services, we're also their confidants, we're also someone they can come and just, you know, vent, um, also tell us, you know, their own, you know, personal dreams even, and, and helping them, you know, so everything is like, Betty said, it's like a collective of effort. So um, hopefully you guys can see that, you know, what I'm trying to do is really the balance of myself, my team, the company, the clients, the market, the sector, really constantly asking the right questions, you know, finding that right balance and creating a sustainable future and for all the key stakeholders who are happy to join on this journey with me. So with that, I feel like I went from leading with my just my heart and now I lead with a clearer mind. And hopefully this was inspiring as well as helpful for you today. Thank you. <laughs>